Hey, today we are learning 15 very common body idioms. Now keep in mind that idioms are not literal. They are expressions. So even though these idioms use body parts or include body parts, they are not talking about our body. They actually have a completely different meaning. So let's go. First up, we have the idiom to have a heart of gold. Now, if someone has a heart of gold, if you have a heart of gold, this means that you are kind, generous, compassionate. You are a very good person at heart, all right? So for example, even though he looks tough, he's a really sweet guy. He has a heart of gold. Even though he looks tough, he is a really sweet guy. He has a heart of gold, all right? So you can use this to describe any person who is kind, generous, caring, basically a person who has a really good heart. Next up, we have to give someone the cold shoulder. Now, if you give someone the cold shoulder, it means that you are intentionally ignoring them or keeping a distance from them. You're trying to sort of stay away from that person on purpose. For example, ever since our argument, she's been giving me the cold shoulder. Ever since our argument, she's been giving me the cold shoulder. So again, to give someone the cold shoulder, you can use this one when you are intentionally avoiding someone. Next is to get something off your chest. To get something off your chest, all right? Now, to get something off your chest, this means to confess or to talk about something that has been bothering you emotionally. So maybe something that has been stressing you out, upsetting you, it's really been on your mind, it's weighing heavily on your mind and you need to basically talk about it to de-stress or not think so much about it. So for example, you might say to someone, listen, I really need to get this off my chest. I need to get something off my chest. And then you go ahead and tell them something that has been bothering you. So for instance, let's say that you lied to someone, okay? You lied to a friend and you've been feeling really guilty or feeling really badly about it. And you want to come clean. This is another idiom. You want to basically confess or admit um, that you have lied to them and it's really been bothering you. You might start off by saying, listen, I need to get something off my chest. I wasn't completely honest with you, okay? And then you go ahead and tell them whatever you lied about, you go ahead and tell them the truth. Next up is to have your head in the clouds, to have your head in the clouds. Now this one means that you are daydreaming. Your mind is basically somewhere else. You're not really paying attention. For example, my son's teacher told me that he seems to have his head in the clouds during class. My son's teacher told me that he seems to have his head in the clouds during class. It basically means he looks like he's daydreaming, not paying attention. He's there, but he's not really there. He's not really focused on what is going on, all right? So to have your head in the clouds just means that you're daydreaming, you're physically there, but your mind is somewhere else. Next is off the top of my head. Off the top of my head. Now we use this idiom off the top of my head when we are talking about or sharing information that we just think of quickly without having to double check, do research or do any kind of calculation. We are just able to think about this information and give it quickly. So for example, let's say that I'm organizing an event and you ask me how many people have confirmed the event so far. I might say, I have to double check, but off the top of my head, I think we have about 30 people so far, okay? So off the top of my head, I'm able to think of this quickly. I might be off by a few people, maybe we have 31, 32, 29. I have to double check, but off the top of my head, this is how many people we have. Let's say that someone asks you for some information and you cannot think of it right away. You actually have to do some research or you have to double check. You might say, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, 
okay? So off the top of your head, this is another very common, useful, versatile idiom that you can use in lots of different situations. You're just able to think of information quickly without double checking, doing any research or doing any kind of calculation. Next up is to play it by ear, to play it by ear. Now, to play it by ear just means to see how things go without having a clear or strict plan. Basically, to just make decisions as you go along, all right? So for example, let's imagine that I have planned a road trip across the country. I'm driving across the country and you ask me, so what stops you have planned on your road trip or what's the plan for your road trip? And I say, honestly, I don't really have a plan for the road trip. I'm just going to play it by ear and see where we end up. Okay, so basically I don't have scheduled or planned stops. I'm going to start driving and kind of see where I end up. All right. Another example, let's say you make plans, social plans to meet up with some friends on the weekend. So you arrange a time and a place to meet, but you don't have a clear plan. Maybe you're going to go out for coffee. Maybe you're going to go out for some drinks. Maybe you're going to have dinner. You don't really know. You want to see what everyone is in the mood for. You might say, let's meet at six o'clock at my place and we'll play it by ear. Let's meet at six o'clock at my place and we can play it by ear. We'll basically see how it goes, decide how we feel and make plans as we go along. So are you someone who likes to plan in advance or do you like to play it by ear? Personally, I like to plan in advance, especially for social events and social situations. I like to know what is going on, generally speaking. When I travel, however, I tend to go with the flow and play it by ear. I don't really plan my itinerary and plan everything that I'm going to do and see ahead of time. So for social things, I don't like to play it by ear, but when I'm traveling, I'm okay with playing it by ear. Next is to keep your fingers crossed. This is to keep your fingers crossed. And if you keep your fingers crossed, it, it doesn't mean that you literally cross your fingers. It can mean that. But generally when we say I'm keeping my fingers crossed or just fingers crossed, it means that we're hoping for a good outcome or we're wishing for good luck. We can keep our fingers crossed for ourselves or for someone else, all right? So for example, I've really been studying hard for this exam, so fingers crossed, I'll do well or I'll be keeping my fingers crossed that I'll do well. So it's common to shorten this one and simply say fingers crossed, okay? Or I will be keeping my fingers crossed. So another example, let's say that a friend of yours has a job interview. You might say fingers crossed or I'll be keeping my fingers crossed for you. Basically, I'm wishing good luck to you, okay? Or I'm hoping for a good outcome. Next is to give someone a hand, to give someone a hand. This one is very, very common. It basically means to offer someone help or assistance with something. It's very easy to use. Instead of saying, can you help me? It's very common to say, can you give me a hand with this? All right. So for example, let's say I'm carrying some heavy boxes. I'm struggling. They're too heavy for me. I might ask, can you give me a hand? Okay, can you give me a hand with this? Actually, I would generally say, can you give me a hand instead of, can you help me? It's a little more conversational and natural. There's nothing wrong with saying, can you help me with this? Absolutely nothing wrong. But a nice alternative is, can you give me a hand? Next is to get cold feet or to have cold feet. So to get cold feet means that you become very nervous or apprehensive about a decision that you're planning to make or an action that you're planning to take. So for example, he wanted to propose to her, but he got cold feet. So he basically had the idea of proposing, wanted to propose or ask someone to marry him, and then he got really nervous. Okay, so to get cold feet, or if you say, I have cold feet, it's not about the temperature of your feet. It actually means I'm nervous about taking this step. Okay, another example, even though he had always wanted to move abroad, he got cold feet and he ended up never moving. Next, we have another foot idiom, and this one is to get off on the wrong foot, to get off on the wrong foot. Now, 
If you get off on the wrong foot with someone, this means that you start off the relationship in a negative way with a bad impression or with some kind of misunderstanding between the two of you. So the initial meeting or the initial or first impression is bad, okay? So for example, I think I got off on the wrong foot with my new boss. He doesn't seem too happy about my first project. I think I got off on the wrong foot with my new boss. He does not seem too happy about my first project, all right? So in this example, I feel like I've made a bad impression with my new boss, okay? Another example is that sometimes when people feel this way, they feel like their initial interaction with someone was not good. They often say, I think we got off on the wrong foot. Let's start over. I think we got off on the wrong foot. Let's start over. Okay, so this is a nice expression to use in those situations where you feel like the first time you meet someone, it wasn't great or there was kind of a negative vibe or bad impression. You get off on the wrong foot. And one more foot expression is to get a foot in the door. To get a foot in the door. Now to get a foot in the door basically means to get an opportunity to start a profession or to enter a professional industry. Okay, so you get an opportunity or a chance to start a profession or to enter into a new industry. So for example, even though this internship is unpaid, it is a chance to get a foot in the door at such a large law firm. Okay, even though this internship is unpaid, it's a chance for you to get your foot in the door, basically to enter the industry or to get it, take your first step into this profession. Next, we have to get under your skin, to get under your skin. Now, if something or someone gets under your skin, this means that they irritate or bother you, okay? So for example, his constant criticism really gets under her skin. It really bothers her or irritates her, okay? You can also say this just about someone who annoys you. You don't like them, okay? You can say, she gets under my skin. I can't stand her, okay? She just bothers me, annoys me, irritates me so much, all right? So to get under your skin, something that irritates you, bothers you, or annoys you. Next is to be eye-catching. To be eye-catching. Now, if you describe something as eye-catching, this just means that it catches or gets your attention, usually because it is attractive or beautiful. So for example, that necklace is so unique. It's very eye-catching, very eye-catching. It basically catches your attention, all right? And generally we use this to talk about things rather than people. It's not common to say you are eye-catching, okay? So just keep that in mind. It's much more common to say that color is eye-catching, your dress is eye-catching, that pattern is eye-catching. So normally used to describe physical objects or things or a pattern or a color instead of people, all right? Next up is the idiom, it's like pulling teeth, okay? It's like pulling teeth. Now we use this one to describe situations that are very difficult, frustrating, and sometimes feel impossible. It's like pulling teeth, all right? So for instance, you could say, getting Joe to talk about his feelings or getting Joe to open up about his feelings is like pulling teeth, okay? It means that I cannot get him to talk about his feelings and it's difficult, it's frustrating, it's challenging, it feels impossible. And next we have, it's all in your head. It's all in your head. Now we use this one to describe a situation that basically you think is true, you believe to be true, but it's not really the reality. It's more like what you feel is happening, but this is not actually what's happening. It's all in your head. So for example, he thinks all of his colleagues are judging him, but it's all in his head. They actually really like him. He thinks all of his colleagues are judging him, but it's all in his head. They actually really like him, okay? You might also say this to a friend of yours who is maybe paranoid or worried about something that isn't really happening or they don't have to be worried about. You can say, don't worry, it's all in your head. This is not the case. This is not the reality. And one more example, a lot of people, a lot of English learners feel that their English is not good enough for certain situations or for certain jobs or to move or to travel or to talk to people. But a lot of times, it's all in your head. It might just be that you are doubting yourself. 
all right? So if something is all in your head, it's basically not really true. You're kind of imagining that that's the case, but it's not. If you are trying to improve your English vocabulary range and learn lots more natural expressions, natural idioms, phrasal verbs, make sure to check out the weekly English words membership created by myself and teacher Tiffany. This is a self-study online membership. You can learn at your own pace. And the purpose of the weekly English words membership is to help you improve your vocabulary range in the context of natural conversations. I will link it down below so you can learn more. Now, learning idioms is a fantastic way to improve your natural English vocabulary. And even if it doesn't come naturally to you at first to use idioms, that is okay. It is important, however, to understand them because if you watch TV shows or movies or read books or articles or you use social media in English, I guarantee you that you will hear idioms and expressions all the time. So you don't have to learn, you know, long lists of hundreds of them right away. But when you hear expressions all the time over and over, this means that these are common expressions and it's definitely worth at least understanding what they mean so that you can understand the overall meaning of whatever you are listening to or reading. Okay. And of course, when you are comfortable or confident with using idioms, I recommend implementing them into your speech. You will sound more natural, even though at first they might seem a little bit strange. And keep in mind that idioms, as I said at the beginning of today's video, are not literal. Okay. They are expressions that have a different meaning. So when you translate them, they might not make any sense. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss new lessons every single week. As well, I have a free ebook for you, English Conversations Made Simple. I will link that down below the video. Thank you for watching, learning, and spending time here with me today. I'll see you very soon in another one.